Hi everybody, in this video we are going to talk about how to create flow charts for congruent triangles. To start, let's review some of the properties of congruent triangles. There's five properties total. There's HL, which stands for hypotenuse leg, side angle side, side side side, angle side angle, and angle angle side. It's important to keep in mind that for these congruence properties, the side lengths always have to be congruent to each other. There's three triangle similarity properties, angle angle, side angle side, and side side side. The big difference here is that the side lengths have to be proportional to one another instead of congruent. It's also possible that you're going to try to prove that two triangles are either similar or, to, or congruent to each other, and it just won't work out. So there's a few different reasons for that. One of those reasons is side-side angle. It's possible that you don't have enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent or similar. The angles might be different between the two triangles. You might have different ratios for the side lengths, or it might be that the information you have just doesn't match up, doesn't correspond. The last thing I want to go over here is common justifications for your bubbles in your flow charts. Given is a really common justification. That would be if something is just given to you on the picture. Like maybe you know two angles are both the same size. Or maybe you know two side lengths are the same size. Um, we're going to look at vertical angles, alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, and the reflexive property in a little more detail. Vertical angles look like this, where they share a vertex in the middle. So when you have vertical angles, they're going to share this vertex in the middle here. Those vertical angles are going to be congruent to each other. Alternate interior angles mean that you have angles that are on alternating sides of a transversal. So a transversal would be like this side right here. And that they would both be in between or interior to your parallel lines. So in this example, they're both in between these two parallel lines. Corring corresponding angles, again, you have the two parallel, two parallel lines. This time they're going to be on the same side of this transversal. They're basically going to be a translation of each other. So they're going to be the same size again. The last thing I want to go over is the reflexive property, and you can have the reflexive property both for side lengths and for angles, and we'll look at an example of each. If you look at the reflexive property here for this first picture, we have a side length where the two triangles connect together or attach together. So if you look at this side length right here at XZ, that's where the two triangles are attached together that side length is going to be the same size in both triangles. So it'll be the same size in triangle WXZ as it is in triangle YXZ. So that's a reflexive side. It's also possible to have a reflexive angle, and you're probably going to see that when you have two triangles that are overlapping, like we have over here on the right side. So in this picture, the angle L's are going to be reflexive with each other. So this angle L for JLN is going to be the exact same size as it is in triangle KLM. So they end up being the same size. They overlap there. Okay, so now that we've looked at some of the vocabulary, let's see if we can figure out how to do a flow chart for this diagram. So what we're going to do is look at the picture and see if we can get an idea of what type of a property to use. So if we look at the picture, we can see that we have some information that we know is the same. Like we know that this side length right here and this side length are the same size. We also have some vertical angles, so these angles right here in the middle are going to be the same size. And then finally, we also have another set of sides that are going to be the same, so this side and this side as well. Let's try to fill in the first bubble now. We fill out the first bubble. We can see that BC is going to be congruent to CD, and that's just given. We know it's given because of the marks that we have on the picture. Next, we know that our angles are going to be congruent to each other. So we've got some vertical angles. BCA is congruent to DCE. 
And then we also have some side lengths that are congruent. And again, it's given because of the way it's marked on the picture. Step three is to fill out the bottom bubble. So you're either going to write your similarity statement or your congruence statement, and then also try to figure out maybe they're not similar or not congruent. In this example, our triangles are going to be congruent to each other. So we've got triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEC. The last step is to make sure that you identify what property you use. So we used the property side, angle side, to prove that these triangles are congruent. So you've got four steps. Decide which property to use. Use that to help you fill out the top three bubbles. And then when you're filling out the bottom bubble, make sure you write your similarity or your congruent statement. And then finally identify the property that you used. Good luck.